definitely a first look closer at the uh, event. So here it is. Today is a beautiful day for science. Currently we're looking at an M7.1 solar flare, I believe it was, that occurred on showing this to tail end to the upper corona, showing all those lovely loops there, uh, having an impact upon the change over. That's where we're seeing 3288 actually slow down a little bit and repel a little bit from 3285. This is different than what was happening prior few days where 3288 was actually invading and colliding into 3285. That's the two regions. 3285 is the one north slightly. 3288 is a little bit to the south. As that shift happened, it caused a change in the expansion and the dimension of that region and how it was progressing and developing. And in doing so, we see a lot of these uh, flares actually start to push back. And that's because the rotation of the sun as you get closer to the equator is actually faster than it is as you go to the north and south of the poles. So the further away from the equator, the slower the rotation of the sun. And what we have is the leading end or the leading negative field umbra of 3288 is moving slightly southward to a slower rotation causing that expansion of loops and that, that growth of space to decrease and thus the reaction and we get our beautiful M-class flare that we see here. It's not uh, an overall extravagant event, but it is, it is still quite beautiful. And we can see that it impacts a lot of those loops throughout that uh, region right there. And you can see it, it starts at the tail end. Beautiful event. <clears throat> Now, in addition to the M class that we just saw, we've had two other regions that have been of interest to me. And let's go ahead and pull those up here on the high resolution imagery so we can get a good view of that. All right. And taking first a look at the area that's right in front of us. <clears throat> we can see that recently, and this is beginning as of the Zulu date of 1 May 2023, up to approximately 1650, I believe. So still relatively current, and we can see here we do have a CME, that's the upper corona, that 335 dark blue sun. Let's go ahead and slow this down a little bit more so I can get a good view of what is exactly happening here and we can see that there's a reaching out of this field line right here causing an arc and now this is 94 angstrom shows us that uh, nice point of where the heat and intensity is at and there you can see that push 131 showing us the hottest points of that flaring location that's this light blue sun gives us a good view of where the pinpointed most intense points of a solar flare is located and we can see here where that cross was actually at right here and that 171 shows us those magnetic field lines the actual loops themselves gives us a good view of where the interactions are occurring especially now that we know what to look for and we can see there was a loop crossing this way and that's actually what caused this loop and this loop to be the issue and you can see that, that motion here, this loop, and one set, this is 193, a little bit of the corona there. And you can see this motion here where this loop is actually pushing out of the way, trying to get away from the crossover. But what's beautiful about that, let's go look at that 193 again, is we can see this event has a beautiful elongated flow, a wave, throughout the uh, corona. This is going to help us to know what to look for when we're looking at SOHO and stereo ahead to uh, understand where that dissemination of plasma went. And this is 211, gives us another view of that corona. 
and we're going to see that again right here. You see, I push all the way down there. And then here's 304, which is a singly ionized helium. It's a unique uh, filter. It's not a uh, ion of iron. And we can see the actual plasma movement here. So we're going to watch that and see that dispersal there. It doesn't show as nicely as the corona because it's not showing us those waves. But then here's the upper corona on 335 angstroms, which is the dark blue sun, which gives us a good view of, uh, once again, like 211 and 193, which was the bronze and the pink sun. And here we go. You can see it's a little bit bright there, but it doesn't show as well. And then here's 1600, which shows us the photosphere, shows us the surface of the sun. Very beautiful view here. Shows us a lot of that, uh, the plage or the, the facula, where you can see the brighter regions. And then you can actually see these little uh, lit up areas. That's the actual flaring. So this event here, even though it wasn't the highlight of the M class and the other stuff that you know we've been watching with 3288 and 3285 might pertain more to what will impact Earth being we do definitely have a CME I do not know if it's an ICME the difference is a CME is just something that uh, expels plasma beyond the corona and the corona is the upper atmosphere of the Sun and that can come back down through electromagnetic energy and gravity to become essentially weather on the Sun you get plasma, rain, and so forth. <clears throat> but um, with the uh, an ICME, it means interplanetary corona mass ejection, which means it is expelled beyond the pole of the sun, electromagnetic or gravity, and it becomes now a solar storm, and that's going to impact anything within the projected field of its path. So this is something we're going to take a closer look at. With SOHO and LASCO, we're going to look for where this is going to be going if it be, makes it beyond the sun. Can't really tell through the imagery here as well, but uh, definitely something to look forward to in here in a moment. But let's go and take a look a little bit at the rim. <clears throat> and of course we know we have this highly active region in the rim, but that's not the only one. Not quite in view is a whole nother one that's rotating into view in the next day or two. <clears throat> So looking at this, we can see there's a lot of plasma movement, a lot of flow uh, of the activity here. You have the, the leading end of this region have a lot of that uh, flaring. That's due to a good sign of growth for that region. It means the region's actually pushing outward, causing that plasma buildup. So it's, it's imagine like taking your hand into uh, some water <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, sliding your hand across. It has a pooling of water in front of it. Well, this, this is what's happening as this expansion happens. That electromagnetic energy, it's all collisional plasma, but it's still repelling from one another. And as it pushes, as you, you, know, you push your hand across, as this region pushes its hand across, it's causing a little gathering of that plasma, and that's causing the incitement of these events as it tries to continue building. And it, that's why we see a lot of these events happening on the leading edges of these... Uh, these regions when they're growing in this nature. <clears throat> yeah, we, we actually we start seeing the second uh, region already. It's actually right there. So there. And here's the one that we've been, of course, we've known about. So there are the two regions. And these are the regions we were looking out for that's going to be giving us some more flaring. And the fact there are two of them, proximity and polarity of these two and their interaction is going to become a big player on what they will provide as they rotate on the Earth-facing disk, which is the portion of the sun that's viewable by Earth. In addition to that, we have, looking at the southern side, we can see there is some prominences doing a little bit of a dance. We get some uh, small CMEs from this area, but nothing that actually stands out too terribly, except for the filaments that are aligned along the edge, causing some disruption, which could be uh, future uh, solar storms and ICMEs in the upcoming. Of course, only time will tell.
when they will erupt if they will erupt. But take it back down. And let's take a look at Soho here. And we'll do a quick view of solar activity that's actually going to uh, impact Earth. So let's move you over to the corner for now. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And let's open up our uh, lovely little tool here created by NASA. There you are. All right. Now this is looking at uh, C3 Soho. <clears throat> I think we should look at C2 first. So let's pull that up. And there we go. Now, of course, we have a pre-existing uh, CME that's occurring on the backside during this time. Uh, nothing to worry about on that one. But as we progress... <clears throat> And here we go. Now we're starting to see some of the other activity that's ongoing from what we looked at. Let's make sure we get the entire event. That's very westward leading. Slightly north. is a good sign that I don't see anything that's actually uh, encompassing or a halo. A halo would be an event that encompasses the uh, full circle of the, uh, the image which shows us that it's either going directly away from or towards the camera that's taking this image which we don't see happening here. But let's take a quick look at it through stereo ahead through its difference which gives us a nice view of anything we might have missed from that. <coughs> And of course, here's the pre-existing CME that I was talking about once again. That's on the back side, not towards us. And here we go. relatively the same shows us nicely we of course see right there uh, on the southern point this little area here that's from the, um, the the southern end where we saw that small flash there Not a big deal so in looking at that I don't see anything that's actually earth projected at that uh, nothing substantial at least. There is a chance that sometimes these events that happen like this one we talked about in the, the back end here that occurred, those kind of events can sometimes mask an event that doesn't show as well because it's either uh, is coming towards the camera or away from the camera so we end up having a disproportion of energy displayed so the other one overwhelms the one can't see it as well. It's kind of like trying to look for uh, a particular light, uh, <laughs> a beam of light in a room of light bulbs. <laughs> you know, it's, it makes it very difficult to do, especially if the other light bulbs are more intense. Here we go. There's that one. And then, of course, we have here. And this is the, uh, the event that we saw, I believe that's actually in front and center, but it is a very directional. Very westward. So yeah, so that's a good sign. Not projected towards Earth. It's going west and north, so northwest. 
and the uh, the filaments that are in question aren't yet facing in an area that we're too we're concerned about yet. So that is the update. We had an M7.1 that occurred uh, recently from Region 3288 due to its change in behavior. We have 3285 almost completely dismantled by 3288 even though it is no longer colliding it is still stealing with a much more organized much more powerful arrangement it's stealing all the loops from 3285 then we have the northern regions from the center to the now coming on the rim which are showing some increase in activity and some increase in flaring but nothing too extreme very uh, overall relatively quiet compared to what potential is there which is good. So that is the update. Just a quick view of things that are ongoing. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. And cheers and science on.